I need to write this shit down. I'm gonna forget all of it otherwise. We'll, we'll do the episode recap. I'll pause after the cutscene, and then I'm 100% catching up on this chat. But I'm up to the bit where Finn and then Sammy said Dresden Files, so. Yeah, we knew the Dark Presence had my wife. Oh, and someone's now going to rescue Ellen Wake. The truth. Here we go. I called it. It's okay, Alan. Imperfect soul. Anyone else who was here in the not last room, the one before that, with the theories, I fucking called it. His wife did die. He's in a mental hospital. I reckon he killed her, and he has to come to terms with the fact that he killed her. And all these demons we're fighting are his inner demons. It's a, it's all an analogy. Mate. I fucking called it. If that's the case, and that is the... This episode's called The Truth, so I'm sure we'll find out the truth. If that's the case, I fucking called it. No, in death, I'm not telling them the monkey story. I'm not going to tell them the story of monkeys. I mean, I can if you want, but no, I'm not going to. And we've caught up. We're playing Alan Wake again, guys. Caught up to the chat, and we're here. Calm? Yeah, I see you brought your pet gorilla with you. So sure, I'm calm. I get the message, loud and clear. Quite right. That's the spirit. You're being very brave, Alan. I understand you're confused. I would be more concerned if you weren't suspicious. I don't blame you. <laughs> Big of you. Now, why don't you <laughs> Love it, Cammy. I protect Pike, and Pike protects. Well, fuck if I know. <laughs> uh, have you? Did you be? Did, were you chased by a monkey for coffee, or did you? Did you see a monkey pinch coffee, or? Uh, I fucking called it. Honey, in death, I don't know if you knew about my theory about how I thought this game was going to go, but the story of this game in death, I fucking called it. It turns out I've been in a mental institution, go undergoing therapy, and that my wife, who I thought was kidnapped, is in fact dead. Now, these guys could still be tricking me. It could be a twist within a twist, but if this is true... Man, that's exactly what I called. I reckon my guy killed my wife. And he, he's created this idea that she got kidnapped because he can't accept the fact that he has killed her. Well, imperfect. Well, exactly. All the doctors are telling him lies and they did take her. So it could still go either way. Like, this doesn't fully confirm my theory. We're on the path. But there could be more twists where it's like, it's not as it seems. Maybe she did get kidnapped. Maybe the doctors are drugging me into believing I'm the one that did it. And these doctors are the ones who took it. And these doctors gave us pills, or gave me pills that make me see demons. The demons never existed. These doctors are the ones who are, who are, who are causing this whole thing. I mean, these guys could be the bad guys. It could go, I'm sure it could still go a million ways. But for now in death, I, I think, I think we're here. I think we're on the right path. Monkeys are hyper. As fuck. At least the ones we encountered in Cambodia, they were hyper as fuck. I can't imagine what effect eating or drinking coffee has on those monkeys. How much more insane do we want those monkeys to be? Because they were hyper. Like, man. I wonder if you can still find things to uh, pick up. Okay.
Splendid, Alan. I honestly believe we can get this thing under control if we work together. I like how I could just run into like other rooms, except that one. What about Lane? Yeah, I could just run into like Lane's room and just check out his drawers and see what Lane's got in his own uh, mental institution. Or is it a mental institution? I missed that bit. Oh, is the game audio low? Sorry. If they're going in a lift? Well, okay, there's nothing to really explore. It is low. Okay. I mean, he is talking low. There's no sound happening in the background, but... Now, and Alan, from past experience with you, I know I need to get right into the heart of the matter as quickly as I can after an episode. So I'm just going to say... How's the volume now? Still low? Is dead. No. You're in a very vulnerable state until you understand and accept this. Alice drowned, and you couldn't face that. You're suffering from hallucinations, paranoid delusions, unusual thinking, an obsession about light and darkness, a feeling that everything revolves around you, your thoughts and dreams. Your mind has constructed an elaborate fantasy scenario in which your writings are affecting reality. She has been kidnapped, and supernatural forces of darkness are trying to stop you. We go this way, Alan. I wasn't ready for another shot, so I went along with it. He had to be lying, but under the influence of the drug he had given me, I had to fight not to believe his words. Yeah, just the way... Yeah, I know. Get to the heart of the matter, and his name is Hartman, I know. Just the way he said that, I can't fight him, or I can't fight believing him because of the drug he gave me. I, I think you're right in perfect. I think... My wife isn't dead, they've taken her, and they're drugging me to make me believe that. These guys are bad guys. They're villains, aren't they? That That's starting to sound more plausible, I reckon. Imperfect. It's all in your head. See? You've been making it He's up. drumming it in. Apart from it's the all in your head. Accident with your wife, no one has been killed. Your delusions are just a manifestation of your subconscious mind trying to protect you from the too painful truth. Unless we fight the fantasy, it will return. I know the instinct is to resist me, but think about it. Doesn't this make far more sense than the insane supernatural conspiracy you have concocted in your mind? You're a skeptic by nature, Alan. We both know this. Everything can be explained logically. Yeah, I just want to go up here and explore. Hold on. Can I go in here? No. Nah. He keeps trying to drum it in. Don't you think that like this is a better reality than the one you've concocted in your head? Like, yeah, he does look like an evil doctor, I know. I think you're right, he's the bad guy. He's the bad guy. He's the one that's orchestrated these events. And this, guy, this episode's called The Truth because we'll discover that he is the villain. And we'll know what's really going on. Never get tired of this view. Very inspiring, isn't it? Cauldron Lake spread below us. I could see Mira Peak on the other side of the lake. I thought I could make out the spot where Diver's Isle had been when I arrived with Alice. Now there was nothing but waves. It seems there's a storm coming. Funny, I don't recall there being a mention of that in the weather forecast. Well, no matter. This way, follow me. I was on an island. Alan, what I'm oh. telling you is good news. Right now we're in control. Every time you have a relapse, it gets more and more difficult to resurface from the dark depths of your imagination. Not surprising, considering your profession. Imagination is what you work with. After all your nightmares, this should come as an immense relief to you. If it doesn't, why is that? Because I'm lying? Or because you don't want to admit that you're not well? It's very natural for you to think of me as your enemy. It's part of the illness. I let him talk. Hartman obviously loved his own voice. His words echoed madly inside my head. But I, can't I dug do my nails into myself. the palms of my hands to stay you focused. You need to work with me. Once you accept that, we can begin the journey towards your recovery. When someone says, I'm not the enemy here, 
you know they're the enemy. Hell, anything can happen. I mean, I've got one theory that I'm kind of trying to will into existence, I guess. It could be something completely different. Who knows, but, um... Come along. Let's go inside. Here's the entrance to the office wing. That's for staff only. You were impressed by my trophies when you first arrived here. I do love to hunt. The great outdoors, man versus nature. It's wonderful stuff. Pretty damn wonderful, yeah. I want to go into the staff only. Plot twist. There is no control. Ah, <laughs> yes. Well, there is no control. Just, uh... I'm up here exploring because I'm just be afraid of me. Don't want to run into me in the night, that's for sure. Please, Emerson. Mr. Wake is confused enough as it is. Yeah, you'd like me to go away so you won't be scared. But you can't just decide what I was supposed to be here to experience this scene. Emerson. Okay, <laughs> okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No. That's Emerson. We're actually making some progress with him, I'm happy to say. He works on <laughs> Video Elbow games. Strike. It's trash, of course, but it does involve some small creative effort, which Sammy. makes him receptive to my therapy. Sammy, needs. man. No kidding. Thank you, Sammy. <laughs> I hope you've been enjoying the streams as well. <laughs> oh. I hope you all get better. And I hope this madman doctor isn't ruining it for you guys. This way. Okay, this way. Come on, this way. Now, you might have noticed the typewriter in your room. has been writing as part of the therapy. You should continue. And I figured it was too loud. That's why I paused the game as well. Because I went, I don't want it to be too loud that it... Over, over powers the audio in the game. This dickhead's right behind me. Hey, give me some space, man. Welcome to Cauldron Lake Lodge. We're here to give you the specialized help you need. However, please observe the following. Please ask friends and family to schedule their visits beforehand to ensure they don't interfere with your therapy and or pre periods of creativity. Also, please respect your fellow patient's need for privacy and personal space, especially when they're engaged by their creative processes. Be patient. Typically, our patients have long-term creative problems, and they won't be solved overnight. Give yourself permission to take the time you need. Bear in mind that you're voluntarily receiving treatment that has been specifically tailored for you. Engagement therapy and its sister method, the flow, work best when you're actively engaged in shaping them. If you have any concerns, please don't hesitate to voice them. It literally says... Bear in mind, you're voluntarily receiving treatment. I don't think Alan Wake is here voluntarily. That's the thing. He, I mean, did he volunteer himself to this treatment? Or have they just poisoned him, kidnapped his wife, and then making him trick himself into thinking he's, uh, he's here voluntarily? I mean, that's not right. I'm glad you're enjoying it as well. So... Dude, dude, let, let me, let me just have some space. Come on. My rheumatism is killing me. <laughs> There's a storm coming. Oh, what a storm. I hope it wipes this place off the face of the earth. And these two are the Anderson brothers, Odin and Tor. <gasps> How should I put this? We met these guys in the first episode. Hades called Old Gods of Asgard. They even adopted new first names to complete the image of Viking gods. After the band broke up, they lived on a farm nearby. They are, well, in advanced stages of dementia. They're well cared for, TLC and all that. There's nothing more that can be done. I'm afraid that the rock and roll lifestyle has left its mark. I met so in the first episode I'm so sorry, I met those two and they weren't the power has been acting up. 
Like they were normal. They weren't like in a mental hospital. Meanwhile, when you feel up to it, or to your were room. they the whole time? Right. Really is for the best, don't you think? That's what that... I'd like to bash his head in with a hammer. No, oh, he'd love to fish out our secrets, but he has no clue. He's not crazy enough. <laughs> not crazy like us, Sonny. Yeah. Being crazy is a requirement, Sonny. Who else could understand the world when it's like this? It takes crazy to know crazy. That's the sanest thing I've heard in a while. <laughs> Say, you're all right, Tom. Hey, we like him, don't we, bro? He's got to go to the farm. I'm not saying. Valhalla. We wrote it all down, lest we to forget. A crash course. All you need to know to get your head right. You need to find the message. Here, Sonny, here's something for you. Gave me a rash, but I kept it safe from these bastards. Uh, My head was clearing up, or according to Hartman, I was sinking back into the fantasy. I was convinced he was lying to me about everything. Crazy or not, the Andersons made more sense. Tom, got any booze on you? Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> we have a stash of the special stuff at the farm. Our own formula. Local ingredients. Medicine clears your head right up. Makes you remember, like, moonbeams on the brain. Oh, I just noticed. Leather patches on the elbows? That's not very rock and roll. Tom just lost his all. Baba Yaga got to him too, the damn witch. She used us all, taken from all of us. Took my thunder, the witch. And my ravens, what was, what were they? <laughs> Memory and thought, the hag. She took something from you too, didn't she? That's what she does. Um, we're better off. This place, the lake, it gives you power. If you're a creator, an artist, a god. I just want to see how long this conversation goes for and if we glean any new secrets. These guys are just talking and talking. I wonder how long this goes for. Make sure it comes out twisted and wrong. Just ask the lamp lady. She knows what happened to that other writer. She's been using you, boy. And you let her. You went and opened the door for her, didn't you? Now, now, it was already open a crack. And whose fault is that? We're morally corrupt, disease-ridden, old and stupid. Doesn't mean he had to open it all the way, goddammit. Ah, uh, And they're done. Okay. So tired. There's so much to unwrap just from that conversation. There's so much that they've, like, like that they've called out to. It's so much to fucking uncover. The Doctor is definitely the bad guy. But in the first episode, when my wife and I got to this island and we came here to do our holiday, because we came here on vacation. Before we, you know, when we came in, we had to get our key, a key to unlock our cottage. Because we were staying, my wife and I were staying on like a, in a little cabin as, as our holiday house. Now, the thing before, when we looked out over the lake with the doctor, Alan Wake had said that, you know, he tried to look out and the cabin that we stayed at doesn't exist. Like, you know, my wife and I stayed at this cabin. And then after she went missing and I went to get the police and we came back, that cabin didn't exist. It wasn't there. And so then the, dog, the police thought I was crazy because I was trying to say that we stayed at this cabin that clearly doesn't actually exist. So it's not a real cabin. In the first episode, when we're going to get the key to that cabin, we, we come across these two guys. But anyway, when we first spoke to them, they were normal guys. They were talking about the witch who gave... It, the, the witch who um, I let in with the door. Now, the witch they're referring to, I think, is the lady who gave me the key. Because in the first episode, I got, my, I got the key to this cabin off this lady who dressed in all black, and she had like a veil over her head. She gave me the key to the cabin. Mind you, the cabin that doesn't exist. I reckon they're talking about her who gave me the key. Because, you know, she gave me the key to the place that caused all this carnage, that caused my wife to disappear, that caused the cabin to not exist. That's, you know, she, she pretty much started this whole thing, this story. I don't think he killed his wife anymore. I don't think he's killed his wife. This doctor is the bad guy, but this doctor's working with that lady. 
who gave me the key. I think she's the one who's bringing people here and sucking them into this dark world. And then, of course, he's benefiting, the Doctor, I mean, because he's getting all his patients into his uh, mental hospital. So I'm still not quite sure what their story is, whether they're working together or if they're maybe not working together. But at this stage, there, there is something there because I did meet that lady who gave me the key. And then you never see her again. She gives you the key and you never see her again. But now that they've mentioned about a witch, it's like, hang on. And then the, uh, and then the other thing that happened here in this scene, they called me Tom Zane. Thomas Zane is an author. So when I first, in the first episode, they mentioned Thomas Zane. They, um, what do you call it? Um, one of the characters that you speak with, they, they, they refer to the fact that, oh, you know, you're another author who's come here. Because we've already had an author who came here called Thomas Zane. And he never left the island. So Thomas Zane has come to this island and he's never left the island. He came for a holiday for whatever reason and he's never left. So I was now the second author that came along. And then you just play the game as Alan Wake. And, and then only in the last episode, we started seeing Thomas Zane's um, name on the walls. You know, we, you know, I don't know if you remember, but in the last episode, we were in the cave and we saw like yellow writing on the walls about Tom Zane. And how this person who's writing it likes Tom Zane. And now these guys called me Tom Zane. So my mind's now going, yeah, Shutter Island vibes, exactly. My mind is going into the whole thing of, I'm not Alan Wake, I'm Tom Zane. When I came at the start of the game as Alan Wake, and the guy who introduced me to the, to the island said, oh, you know, you're the second author that's come along. The first one was Tom Zane. They're talking about me. And maybe Alan Wake is like a persona that he took on mentally Built a farm close to the lake, a place of power. I don't know why. I, because in the first episode when you meet yeah, them, they look like, you know, they look like, I mean, they look like that, you, but you just assume they're bikies. But they don't make sense. Except here they make sense. The app through the window, hit that a hippie chick. I don't think they're going to say anything else though. Like this is just going to be rubbish now that's not related to the story. I think we gauged what we needed to from that first discussion. So, oh, watch the movie for university. Yes. Yeah, my, my wife had to watch Shutter Island uh, as part of one of her assignments for university. Because uh, one of her course, because she was doing a, a medical course. And so, Shutter Island was required for them to watch because of it. So, I had already seen Shutter Island prior to that. Um, and then she had to watch it for uh, medical. So... I reckon these guys will make sense. If you listen to them, that will make sense. But we're not going to go around and listen to everybody. The Creator's Dilemma. The engaging new book by Dr. Emil Hartman, the author of the best-selling Creative Flow. His groundbreaking techniques, engagement therapy, and the flow. Oh, I don't care. I mean, I do care. He, he is the bad guy, but I still... <laughs> I think this game is leaving... They're leaving so many different clues to make you believe that, on one hand, I killed my wife. On the other hand, I could be Thomas Zane and not really Alan Wake. Oh, hello. I've painted you. What? You painted me? Okay. I was just struck by inspiration a couple of days ago. Dr. Hartman wanted me to paint landscapes, and that's what I was doing. Is that me? And now I've been doing these things, a lot of them. The images just keep coming. Dr. Hartman likes Yeah, them. I wouldn't want to live with dementia or the burrito. Yeah. He's very proud of me. He says I'm getting much better. I think I'm getting better. I mean, you hear, you hear all sorts of medical conditions. You're an EMT, exactly. So you, you'll know as well, burrito. But like, I hear the horror stories through like my wife and it's just, uh, there's probably, uh, it's probably, a, we, we've probably got a laundry list where it's like, you know, man, it's, if, if, if anything happens to me and I end up this, 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 that, or that, just, just pull the plug and put an end to me because I don't want to live like that. We've already had those discussions where it's like, I don't know if, I, I, I don't want to live with certain things, so, um. Hey, wait. Why don't you humor Dr. Hartman and give the writing a shot, huh? Typewriter's in your room. You can get to your room by those stairs, Wake. Yeah, yeah, okay, we'll go to our room. Something's wrong. See? I'm not myself. See, TVs play me. There's a shadow in Every TV you come across plays a video with me in it. Everything else is a blur. I'm trapped in this cabin. Have been for days, but it's always dark outside. My editor is real. 
I saw her again. She's not human. It's not human. A dark presence is wearing the old woman's face. She was covered in clinging shadows. There's a hole in her chest where her heart should be. I think I've made a horrible mistake. I don't think I'm any closer to saving Alice. It's been lying to me, using me to get the story it wants, and the story will come true. Maybe the video is Alan Wake, and I'm playing as Thomas Zane. Hartman wanted me to write. I knew I couldn't, but I figured I should just play along for now. It was the only thing I could do with Nurse Birch watching me like a hawk. What if the video... So what if the video... Because I, I thought... Okay. There's two things. He has the power to make anything he writes or dreams to life. Well, I don't know, Imperfect. But I, don't, I don't know. Maybe. We could try and see. The the doctor tried to make me believe that, I think. Like, Dr. Hartman has said that whatever I write comes true. But I don't know if he means that, like, actually. Like, Hartman had mentioned that the power had been acting up. Maybe that was the reason for the generator and the work light on the balcony. Yeah, or are they delusions? Like, you know, do I actually dream stuff to life? Or the doctor's been saying that I can do that? Like, as delusions. The right, I mean, I don't know. And there was no key. Are you on TV? Well, this is what I'm thinking. So, as we've been playing the game, we've been coming across these TVs where there is a guy in the TV who's looking for Alice. Now, Alan Wake, the character that I'm playing as, his wife is Alice. Now, I'm thinking... That character... I've changed my mind. That character in the TV is Alan Wake looking for his wife, Alice. I'm not playing as Alan Wake. The whole game, I thought he was Alan Wake, but when those guys called me Tom Zane, I'm thinking, I'm Tom Zane. Like, I actually think that I'm Tom Zane. And I've been watching these videos of Alan Wake looking for his wife, but I'm not Alan Wake. But I don't, I don't, I mean, maybe. I don't know. I, I, I don't know where I sit with this. Are the TVs really showing you? Well, I don't know. I don't know, Indes. I thought they were showing me. But I could be someone, yeah. Well, Alan Wake's the character he created, yeah. It, it, I, I don't know, in death, yeah, exactly. I don't know if the TVs are really showing, or if the TVs are in my head. Like, the TVs are a blank screen, but I see something playing back on there. Like, the actual video feed probably doesn't exist. Like, other people are watching that TV, and, yeah, they're both writers. Yeah, Tom Zane and Alan Wake are both writers. They're both writers. And I'm wondering if they are the same person and that Ellen Wake's like his alter ego that he created, that Tom Zane created. That's what I'm... Uh, I'm uh, there's, a, oh, there's a lot to unpack here. Like right now in Perfect Soul, I could come up with like 10 different endings of how this could go. Yeah, so many possibilities. Exactly. I'm just sitting here going like we've 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 gotten some more juicy bits from the from the quotes like from the from the cutscenes and it's like and this could now go anyway fuck you're gonna have lunch now and you'll switch to your phone oh Kishi no worries thank you so much for the for being here man I hope you've been enjoying the um the chats as well there the, the I, I I tend to do a lot of theorizing as well here Kishi if you haven't already told I like to theorize about how games are gonna end like I do with movies so. I hope you've been enjoying that too, man. But thank you so much for coming in and uh, enjoy lunch. He can't be Tom because that means he killed his wife. The white glare of the blank page in front of me hurt my eyes. It depends if Tom killed his wife. My hands began to shake on. We don't know if Tom killed his wife. We'll learn some more. Hell bells. How are you going? You're confusing yourself. Well, is the wife really dead? Exactly. Hey, wait, we don't know. I'm gonna go see what's up. We don't know you if the wife's really dead. What you're doing. Be anyway, good, okay? We'll touch base after the cutscene, hold on. We might learn something new. I didn't know what the chaos was all about, but it could be my only chance of getting out of here. 